Welcome to Chaos Podcast. I am your host, Terry Lynn. I am a virtual assistant, bookkeeper, and international business strategist. I love leveling up, creating strategies, and thinking outside of the box, especially with serial entrepreneurs because we are impacting the world with new innovations, community collaboration, and global technology. We will discuss strategies that stifle mental chaos so that you can create habits and outstanding success right here on chaos good morning jackie good morning terry lynn (laughs) (laughs) your story is extraordinary and i cannot wait for the audience to hear it because if there is not proof that we can heal Yours definitely gives us the inspiration to push, to research, to follow your heart. Pun. (laughs) (laughs) Very much so. (laughs) So welcome to chaos. Thank you. So happy to be here. (laughs) Jackie Waiwitka, correct? Very good. You got it. You are a healthy heart coach. I am. Your title is integrative heart health coach. That's correct. Yes. Wonderful. You help people with heart disease and risk factors mm-hmm. by being empowered in their health care in order to live their best lives. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, at the age of 36, you were diagnosed with the unthinkable congestive heart failure from unknown causes. There we go, unknown causes. With a 15% functioning heart, Mm -hmm. allergic to most pharmaceuticals, you developed a natural health plan. Today, you, you are pharmaceutical, medical device, and sugary free and you become oh surgery free i got excited that's okay i love sugar too (laughs) you have become a as we said integrative heart health coach to help those with heart disease and risk factors welcome 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 i'm so glad to have you here thank you we get to learn some serious stuff yeah, I know. I want to uh, show your logo. Okay. It's beautiful. I love it. Uh, thank you so Tell much. Tell us how you came about this beautiful logo. Okay. Um, so there are a couple of things. Obviously, the heart shape is for my heart disease. And then the butterfly. So I have a genetic condition called Turner syndrome, which only affects ladies. And believe it or not, amongst both men and women, it is the second most common genetic defect after Down syndrome. Wow. And in females, it's number one common defect by double anything else. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, amazing that we haven't heard this before. You won't um, because the only trait that you will visually see is that I'm a bit shorter than average. I'm only four foot 10 or 150 centimeters. Okay. <laughs> that, and, and that's, that's the only outward sign that you would see. So it's not something that people would see or hear about. Wow. The, yeah. So that's the butterfly. So it's, we're called butterflies because it's only in females and we tend to be very happy and outgoing and loving people. And then the thumbprint in the heart, that was an interesting suggestion from a friend actually, because what I do is I, my big thing in medicine is that I don't believe it's differentiated. Okay. I don't, um, and for those of you who don't know what differentiate means, it means recognizing the differences in each person and recognizing your genetic differences, your lifestyle differences, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. 
our medicine, our allopathic, our Western medicine does not recognize that. And it wasn't until I started meeting others who were going to the same cardiologist as myself. And we were all told to be on the exact same meds, the exact same doses. Right. I'm four foot 10 female young. Why am I on the same doses as a 390 year old, 300 pound, 90 year old man? That makes, yeah, I, yeah it makes no <laughs> sense. Uh, that's <laughs> why I tell people when they're like, I got on the scale and I didn't lose weight. Um, did your clothes get looser? Exactly. Because mass <laughs> and volume are different and you lose, you know, yeah. <laughs> some people lose it on the top. Some people lose it on the bottom. Some people lose it around the middle. You know, That's right. mm -hmm. I have asthma and I'm allergic to a lot of foods. And I grew up a vegetarian eating fruits and vegetables. Now I'm allergic to a lot of fruits. Well, you know, the environment has changed and the way they make food now has changed. So Absolutely. my body has not adapted to the unclean, unhealthy. So I'm all about the healthy. I'm all about trying to find a natural way to, mm -hmm. I say, synchronize your body with the environment mm -hmm. so that you're healthier. So That's tell nice. us when that happened to you, mm -hmm. and I know you was like, what the? Mm. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> what was like the first thing that you found that worked? The, oh, the first thing that I found that worked, um, let's see, was going keto. I love keto. Me too. Mm. I love keto. <laughs> <laughs> Which is against what almost any heart association or cardiologist will tell you. Really? Yeah. Um, and the reason why it worked for me is you actually have to look at the mechanism of salt. And this is going to be really fascinating, I think. Okay. So pretty, a lot of people know that too much salt is bad for you, yes. right? That's something we hear. And it's probably pretty common knowledge that if someone has heart disease, that they should be low sodium. Right. Right. Uh, that's kind of general information. And that's what any cardiologist and heart association will tell you. But what you have to do is you have to look at how the house, why they say no salt. So they say no salt and low salt because salt will make you retain fluid. Right. Which will bring up your blood volume, the amount of blood you have in your body, which will create high blood pressure. Okay. So that's right. the mechanism that they're going from which makes total and utter complete sense. Right. But your body actually doesn't retain salt on its own. If you do a fast and you drink salt and water for three days, you will not gain a pound. You'll probably actually lose a lot of weight. Salt needs a carrier. And guess what that carrier is? Carbs and sugars. So if you eliminate sugar, salt is the carrier of carbs and sugar. Uh huh. So salt can only make you gain fluid and weight if you eat it with carbs and sugars. It can't actually adhere to your body on its own. Get the what was what, what did our old people say? <laughs> shut shut the front door. <laughs> yeah yeah what yeah. Oh okay. Let's say this again. <laughs> salt is a carrier of sugar and carbs it cannot connect to you itself because i always thought because it it uh, holds water that that mm -hmm. water they call it water weight that mm -hmm. that water weight was what you would see as a gain mm -hmm. but it can't do it on its own it needs help to make that water weight happen that and is crazy. Isn't it crazy? And if anybody's going like, I don't believe you right now, I would encourage you to follow cardiac researcher James Dino Colatino on social media and read his book, The Salt Fix. All the info's in there. Because yeah. we're going we're gonna to put that name in the script. 
yeah. of your <laughs> podcast. So sure, we'll get we'll get the spelling of it later. Okay, and yeah. the book name and everything, and we'll put it in the script. And you all, it's going to be a lot of juicy things in her <laughs> script. So do yeah. not miss it. <laughs> Uh, stay tuned guys stay on (laughs) um so yeah that's phenomenal isn't it phenomenal and you know what it breaks my heart completely to go on to support groups and people going I'm doing exactly what my cardiologist told me I'm eating vegetarian I'm eating vegan I'm not eating any salt at all and I just keep feeling worse and worse and I keep getting fatter and fatter And, and, you know, and you put the little hints out there going like, well, if you're thinking, you got my full attention, like, (laughs) what? Yeah. Like, please, please read this, do this research. Don't believe me. Don't trust me. Cause you know, I'm all about getting the, from the source. So that's why the keto diet works because it's low in carbs. It's very low in carbs and actually the number one cause of heart disease is inflammation and the biggest Mm -hmm. cause of inflammation is insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. And then when insulin resistance gets to a point, it becomes type 2 diabetic. And this is what people don't realize either is that you can be insulin resistant and have low blood sugars. Yeah, I do know that. Yeah. I studied keto under Dr. Berg. Oh, I love his videos. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, of course, being the analyst that I am, I went outside of him and mm-hmm. make sure that what he is saying is the truth. Mm-hmm. But exactly. yeah. that man is so precise. Mm-hmm. Dr. Berg is so precise. Yeah. that he has convinced me to do keto and we've been doing keto for I want to say almost two years mm-hmm. I had a tummy tuck in October of 18 and decided okay that cost too dang on much money to gain any weight and started finding things that would help me and keto was it mm-hmm. keto was it and most people are like oh, I don't know nothing about keto but you can eat meat and vegetables. I mean, of course you can't go overboard, mm-hmm. but you can eat meat and vegetables and you can have some carbs. Mm-hmm. You have to be picky about your carbs. You do. But yeah. the only thing that my only challenge with keto is the sugar. Mm-hmm. That sugar, I'm like, we should have, like they have AAA. <laughs> we need yeah. a support group for that sugar okay mm-hmm. and, mm, and let me ask you a question when you want sugar what exactly do you want like do you want chocolate do you want fruit do you want ice cream i, I don't really eat fruit no ice cream so I it's, know you see, yeah it's it's usually like a uh, moon pie or Ooh. oatmeal cream the little oh. oatmeal cream thing <laughs> or um we have our favorite cake ganache cake it was our mm. wedding cake and like anniversary or something like that we eat ganache cake mm. so it's things like that it's the real sugary stuff like like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> like that it's got to be a special occasion and it's got to be a reward. It's not something I can eat all the time, but exactly. call, it calls me all the time. I feel like a real junkie, <laughs> a, a sugar junkie, because it calls me all the time. I use a lot of Splenda and you mm. know, I keep trying to figure out if that's good or bad, but, and I have high blood <laughs> pressure. Mm. So keto has helped that. Mm-hmm. And I have okay. asthma. And the inflammation mm. is one of the things that affects my asthma more than anything. Mm. And keto has helped that. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The so, reason why I was asking, sorry, about your cravings is because we get cravings for a reason. I and, and, you know, and it's different if it's just like, oh, it's there in front of me, so I'm craving it. But for me, for instance, I crave chocolate. And then when you actually look at what's in chocolate, it's 
magnesium, specifically yes. dark chocolate, right? And 94% of us are magnesium deficient. So when you're craving something, it's important to look at why are you craving it? Magnesium. And I have heard that magnesium is, is something that we really are deficient in. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna buff up on my magnesium and see if that helps mm-hmm. with my sugar cravings. Yeah. That would be nice if it's that okay. simple. Do you have it, any other tips for that sugar thing? <laughs> um, other than look exactly at what you're craving, like if it's specifically oranges, well, maybe you're not getting a bite enough vitamin C, right? So I mean if it's not something in front of you and you can visually see it and want it, because that's a whole different, you know, visual want. Thing, yeah, right? yeah. But if it's something that you're like, oh, I'm craving this so badly, no matter what it is. If it's pickles, for instance, you could be craving salt. You could be low on salt. You, you know, know, I went through being low in iron where I was addicted mm. to starch. Mm-hmm. I was so addicted that I found myself one day I drove to the Publix grocery store, got the box of starch, and I could not even get home in the parking lot. Wow. I had to have the starch. And so I mm. found out that I was iron deficient because I tried to donate blood. And mm. they were like, no, you're really iron deficient. So, mm. you know, I did some things about that and it really worked. I mean, the the craving just went away. So if I can do some magnesium, grab an overdose of magnesium to get rid of this chocolate, I would, I would love to just have it, you know, just have it and not crave it. Yeah. Have it because I want to have it and not because I feel like I really need it or I just can't get to the moment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And that's one of the problems too with sugar is that it's, you know, it's, comparable to a drug if you look at the studies of the brain of the addiction part of the brain that lights up um compared to like crack it lights up it lights up on the ct scanner (laughs) 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 it does it lights up that addiction part of the brain and it makes it go crazy and that's why it's such a hard habit to kick oh my god you know it's it's because of i've never met anyone who's been able to kick the sugar habit kick it, kick it to the curb. <laughs> I'll save it for you. <laughs> I, you know, I would, like I said, I don't want to never have chocolate. That That's not my, I would just want to not crave it. Like mm-hmm. not get up 11 o'clock at night and go to the corner store mm-hmm. and get a hostess Twinkie and it's mm-hmm. done before I get home. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> That would be really nice. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. So tell us what type of heart health plan you got on. Okay. So, uh, so I have five categories that I look at in heart health. So the first one is nutrition. And this is where the fingerprint part of my thing comes in. So what I do for nutrition is 91% of all heart patients are nutritionally deficient. Um, And this, yeah. And so I will send you to wherever your local lab is um, to get a full nutritional panel done so that we can find out exactly what you're nutritionally deficient in. Um, I have identified eight groups of foods that most heart patients have one or two at least of them intolerant to. So we go on an elimination diet for 21 days where we eliminate those eight groups of food. And then after the 21 days, we request. Now the 21 days is important. And if anybody's interested in this, you can research JJ Virgin. Um, and about the 21 days is it actually takes your body 21 days to reduce the inflammation to a point of non-existence in your body if it's from food. Okay. Okay, so it's really important to get to that 21 days. Now, if you're slightly intolerant to something, maybe you can't lose weight and 
you don't really feel very badly, but you don't understand why. So it could be that you're slightly intolerant to a food that's keeping you bloated. So you have to, so, but you wouldn't call it an allergy and it wouldn't show up on an allergy test. The only way to figure it out is to eliminate it for 21 days. So the, the um, inflammation from that food is completely gone from your diet and then to test it. And when you retest something that you've eliminated to, even if you're just a slightly a little bit intolerant to, your body will send signals right away because it hasn't seen it for three weeks. Wow. So it'll let you know right away that it is not a half a camper. <laughs> okay. And then what do you do with mm -hmm. that information? With that information, we build a diet plan specifically for you to fill those nutritional holes and to help you stay away from the foods that you're sensitive to. <laughs> you sound like my natural path doctor. I have a natural path doctor that when things get really, really, really bad, I'll go to her because mm -hmm. I know right off the bat, it's gonna cost me $300 mm -hmm. every time I go to her. And I only go to her once every two or three years, but mm -hmm. every time I go to her, I walk away spending $300. Not because that's how much she costs, she puts you on a bi bi bio feed. I think okay. that's what it's called. So she hooks you up to all these little things mm -hmm. and she finds out what you're deficient in or what's, you know, what you have too much of, that type of thing. And then she gives you all the little bottles of real stuff, you know, instead of the mm -hmm. pills and things like that, where you're taking drops. I mean, mm -hmm. one time I ended up with like 32 drops a day. Wow, that's a lot. But everything went away. Like before I had my oh. surgery, I had to have blood work and everything to do. Mm -hmm. I had blood work done, let's say that. And my surgeon looked at my my uh, records, my blood work. It was, she was like, oh my God, you're like phenomenally healthy. <laughs> like this surgery is going to go so smooth. She said, your recovery is going to be wonderful because I exercise every day too. Mm -hmm. She said, your recovery is going to be wonderful. This is going to be a piece of cake. I thought, started to ask for a discount. Like it's going to be that easy. <laughs> I would. Why not? <laughs> she was so phenomenal. I, I actually wanted to give her a raise after everything Aww. was over. I mean, she, her surgery was phenomenal. Her bedside manner is so wonderful. You actually feel like a friend. Mm. And she believes in all the natural nutrition. Wonderful. So, yeah. So That's yeah, I, I, I get your program, which is absolutely wonderful Thank because you. you need to know what's going on inside of you because absolutely. it reflects everything on the outside of you. Absolutely. So that's the nutrition part. And then we go to exercise. And uh -oh. so. Uh-oh, uh -oh, y'all hear that? Uh-oh. <laughs> 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 um, so, <laughs> and now this yes. is fascinating because this is another thing that I hear all the time. I was an athlete. I was so healthy. I ate healthily, but then I had a heart attack or my heart just started to go mm -hmm. funky. Mm -hmm. I don't know why my doctors don't know why I don't understand why right now there is something called a J curve or a U curve depending on who you talk to so basically at the bottom of the curve in the round part where you get the optimum results for your heart and exercise is those that do moderate exercise okay Okay, so they're not overstressing, they're doing mm -hmm. lots of walks, short jogs, hikes, easy hikes, um, you know, going out, riding the bikes with the kids, that kind of thing. And then you have the two stems. And on one side, you have your, the people who don't exercise at all. Right. Okay, and on the other stem, you have your athletes. Athletes are almost just about, and that's why it's either a J for the shortened, or are you, depending mm -hmm, you talk to, mm -hmm. as likely to have a heart attack as someone who doesn't exercise and eats junk food. Why? Um, because you overstress the heart. So there is a heartbeat for everyone that is your sweet spot where you build the boat, 
most muscle. Now, part of my journey to discover what this is, is I found the research from the godfather of cardiac rehab and from the 1940s, and I got his formula, which was for men because he was an army military doctor from Finland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I took his formula and then I added in some kind of modern day things to it. And then the one thing I added for females is I added the Gulati principle. Now, Martha Gulati. The what? Yeah, Gulati principle for females. Gulati. Gulati principle. Okay, mm -hmm. I want to make sure I'm spelling this right. I'm, I'm taking notes. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Martha Gulati is an exercise physiologist from India. All right. Mm. And we all know males and females react differently to everything. Like, we're just biologically different. So her principle is, and it's really, really simple, is that females only need 88% of exercise, nutrition, medicine as a man to achieve the same results. So I took that 88% and I worked it into the formula so that females only get 88%. You've been working, girl. You Oh, uh, you have no idea. You have <laughs> been working. Yeah. And I'm sure so many people appreciate that work. Oh my God. Cause you have actually put it together for us. I have, I've put it all there. So we do the math <laughs> um, and we figure out what that is. And then there are stages depending on where you are in your recovery. So for instance, stage one is when your heart function is less than 40% EF ejection fraction. And or you we just don't know had what that surgery. is yet, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Ejection. Yeah, I don't want you to think that I know what you're talking about. No, we haven't said that yet. I'll just quickly You'll say what it is. <laughs> So ejection fraction is the amount of blood that your heart pushes out each Okay. Time. Okay. And depending on where you are in the world, um, the average is between 50 to 70% of your blood should be pushed out each beat. Okay. Okay. So if your heart is pushing out less than 40%, it's considered um, heart failure. Or 80%. 80% right? is, co is considered high functioning heart failure because right. it's pushing out too much. too much. Okay. So it can go either either end of the spectrum. All right, I get that. And as you heard before, mine was 15 functioning. So mine was only pushing out 15% of my blood each beat. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> Nobody really knows for sure. <laughs> is uh, that's I on hate my, that. That's on my records. It's idiopathic, which is, you know, it's means I don't know. And, and they have a they have a fancy word for it. They do, isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> Just to make you feel special. <laughs> Idiopathic. Idiopathic. Woohoo. So if you're just had surgery or if you have, you know, in heart failure or if you've had any really big mental or emotional traumas happening in your life, then you want to be at what's considered thirty to forty percent of your heart rate reserve. And, and okay. so for me, for instance, that's under 30 to 40% is 93 to 106 beats per minute. Okay. Okay. So I don't, so if when I'm that low or I've just had anything major happening to the body where the body's super stressed, I want to be no more than 106 beats per minute for myself with okay. my numbers when I work out. Okay. Then the next level is once you've kind of got past that stage. And there's a few qualifying factors that you'll do with me so you know it's safe to go past that stage um, is 40 to 60 percent of your heart rate reserve which for me is 107 to 131 okay. beats per minute to okay. exercise at yes. and this is when we're kind of like building up endurance from being having a really stressed body we're building back our strength all that kind of thing and then the sweet spot is 65% of your heart rate reserve. And that's when your heart's going to build the most muscle. Okay. Okay. And for me at the age, I'm 38 now. Um, so that heart rate for me is 136 beats per minute. So okay. when I exercise, that's try to where I try to exercise most right. of the time so that my heart, my heart that's muscle that, gets that's, strong. That's at like 20 minutes, like, 
exercise at this level for 20 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. For cardio health. For cardio health. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And then your 70 to 90% um, of your heart rate reserve is when you're, you know, getting into those endurance athletes and stuff. And, you know, what's fascinating to me is that this information I just told you about athletes being prone to heart attacks is not known by cardiologists, but in sports medicine, they actually have EKG leads, not just um, a chest strap that monitors your heart rate, but actually an EKG lead. It's a company called Fourth Frontier, where a coach can be at their computer while you're running a marathon and monitoring your, your um, heartbeat pattern. And they will actually, you know, come over the speaker while you're racing and saying, like, cool it, take a walk. Oh, wow. Your heart rate's getting erratic. Oh, wow. So the sports, sports medicine knows that this happens. They know that this or is a cardiologists possibility. don't know it. But, well, not many of them, apparently. <laughs> so how long have you been on this journey? Two years. Almost two years. It'll be two years in March. Two years. Because you said it happened to you at 36. Two years is not a long time. No. For you to find out this information. So we know what you've been doing full time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And a lot of health along the way. <laughs> so you believe in healthy eating. So you have a free recipe book that has myth busters. Yes. Tell us about that. <gasps> Um, so it's a very short recipe. It's just five of my favorite recipes. Um, and they're all keto friendly. Yay. Yay. Cause they're all insulin resistant. So I've got an awesome beet and chicken stir fry because Ooh. beets have oh, so many good things for the heart health mm -hmm. to make you good. What else do I have? I have my, I used to live in China for three years and my favorite Chinese street food. So it's a take on that called Ji Dan Bing. <laughs> and so it's basically an egg pancake with vegetables okay. and spices. I so like egg I have, pancakes. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? So mm -hmm. that's in it. I have a guacamole steak salad in it. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds good. <laughs> it is so good. It's my favorite. I love steak. I'm such a steak. Okay, so I'm going to make this your listening gift. You okay. all, this is going to be her listening gift. So just click on listeninggift.com or go to listeninggift.com and you'll be able to get her free recipe book. Yay! And for <laughs> all of us who are wondering how to get all of this juicy information into our lives, she's going to do a mm -hmm. six month kickstart mm -hmm. heart health program. Say mm -hmm. that three times. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> so she's going to do that. We're going to put the link in there. And if it's not ready yet, then we're going to have to come back and when it's ready and tell mm -hmm. you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I would love to come back. <laughs> Other than that, she does workshops. She's a podcaster or do you, are you a guest on podcasts? I'm a guest on a lot of podcasts. So she's a guest on a lot of podcasts. So mm -hmm. how do we find you on the other podcast? Um, so Ray, I have been on the heart attack thriver. Okay. Um, so you can find that on Instagram. Okay. I have been on where else have I been on mm, maybe, maybe we can just put your name because yeah I put them all on my the, social media so okay on her social media <laughs> on my social on media is the best that's where we yeah. found her social media <laughs> and you're working with the national cardiology oh yeah almost <laughs> so in England they have a patient uh based charity called cardiomyopathy uk and cardiomyopathy Myop means Myop. heart muscle disease and so it's kind of their patient service where they help you advocate they train you nice. it's completely free and the best thing about them is that anybody in the world can go to their support group meetings oh wow so we're gonna put and, the link to that in her script yep <laughs> along with her favorite book by james somebody oh uh james Nico latino yeah 
We'll what get that said. right in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what she said. <laughs> and you talked yeah. about JJ Virgin. Is that the green smoothie person? JJ Virgin? Uh, yes. Um, she, yeah, she was the one who actually, that I found, came up with the 21 days of elimination to figure out yeah. if you were. Yeah. I think I have her book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, um, I learned how to do green smoothies in the blender because before I found her, I was actually juicing everything. Uh, and then I was throwing away a lot of the pulp and decided mm -hmm. to make that into a salad. And then I started mm -hmm. juicing and putting the pulp back in the juicing because I ran to a friend who has a product called Chuse, C-H-U-I-C-E. Mm -hmm which is okay. like a chewy juice. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> and then we have the Martha Gallet Principle. Gulati. So that link is going to be in there. And the Godfather. Mm -hmm. That link is going to be a girl. <laughs> this script is going to be juicy. <laughs> Y'all have to go to her script and get everything. We're going to have our social media in there so you can contact her. What's your website? My website is www.healthyheartcoachjackie, spelt my way, dot org. <laughs> yeah. Have that in there. Mm -hmm. And she is going to be everywhere on all the social medias. She is going to have her own blog and she is going to be on 17 podcast directories. Wow. <laughs> You're setting me up for the year. <laughs> so if anybody wants to be a podcast guest on Chaos, please fill out the guest profile, which wasn't too difficult, was it? No. Yeah. It wasn't fill out the guest profile, which is going to, the link is going to be in there. And we're so happy to have you, Jackie. You are a wealth of information, a dictionary mm -hmm. of healthy heart. Thank Thanks you. so much. We truly enjoyed you sharing with us and good You're luck so in the future thank you so much terry lynn thank you so much for having me on here today it's been such a pleasure <laughs> bye bye now bye bye i want to thank you for listening because this podcast is for you and don't forget to get your listening gift you can go to listeninggift.com that's l i s t e n INGGift.com. Compliments and constructive criticism are welcome. If there is anything you would like me to talk about, just hit me up. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Coach Terry Lynn. That is Coach T as in Tom, E R R I L Y N N. And remember, create habits and outstanding success with us right here on chaos.